So what can you what can you tell me about you know fire situation you know that you're, that you're learning? Well, I, I want to talk about what occurred over this uh, over this current year, uh, 2012, um, and some of the things that we've learned in terms of changing risk to the American Fire Service. First, we would have to th uh, to talk about the major weather weather events that are occurring. Um, one of the things we have learned is that many fire departments out there do not have a, a continuity of operations plan. Um, they don't have plans uh, to uh, prepare themselves um, for becoming victims rather than responders. Uh, when this storm, this uh, superstorm, hit the Northeast, many departments um, not only lost their facilities, they lost their apparatus, and in many cases, they lost their personnel. Um, you know, especially when we think about volunteer departments, and, and I think the same holds true for career. Um, if you're a firefighter and your home has been either destroyed or significantly damaged, um, it's a difficult decision whether to remain on duty uh, and serve others who are in peril, uh, while at the same time your own family is suffering. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's a huge challenge, and I think it's a challenge to the uh, leadership of uh, the fire and EMS systems in this country to begin planning for these kinds of events, regardless of, of the nature. You know, a hundred fire stations burn every year. Uh, the number one cause is cooking. Uh, the alarm goes off, we leave the food on the stove, and it spreads into the, to the building. Uh, lightning and, and electrical and others follows. But... Uh, it's, I think it's a wake-up call for the fire service first uh, in that regard. Uh, there's also uh, ensuring that the fire chiefs know their role in emergency management when these major weather events occur, whether it be ice, snow, wind, flood, tornado, hurricane. Make sure that they are a player in the planning for, the, for these events and that there are mechanisms put in place uh, to take care of their uh, members. Uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the wildland urban interface threat and how that is uh, emerging. Um, quite honestly, there's a, a number of things going on in the standing fuels in this country, uh, in the, uh, the suburban areas of, of the country. Um, drought is, and beetle kill and a number of other things is increasing the threat of wildland urban interface fires need to work with your state foresters to identify high at risk uh, areas and develop uh, plans uh, in terms of what again your role is uh, when these major events occur. And you need to decide now whether you're willing to deploy into other communities to support their efforts and uh, will your firefighters be, be taken care of when they do to deploy. Uh, well it's, it's hard not to talk about the economy and right. the impact that it's having um, on uh, all departments. Uh, it's an equal opportunity uh, threat, I think, to our career, our combination, and our volunteer fire departments. Our volunteer departments are, are really hurting because they depend on uh, in two things. First, human resources, and uh, the families are under stress today. Many families are dual income, and they, they just the available time to, to pull duty is, is not there. Um, career departments are, are losing members because uh, they, they cost money and the cost cutting is occurring at every level of government, in, including our own. Uh, so uh, I, I, we have developed a, uh, um, a topical report called uh, Alternative Funding Mechanisms. It's available free online. You can download it or you can, you can read it right on our website if you use our search engine. Uh, alternative funding uh, mechanisms, uh, or just type in al alternative funding and uh, it'll take you right to the report and you can, uh, can use that. Uh, it was put together by uh, some really smart people who have really some innovative ideas uh, to assist you. So I think that's a, a big threat and what it, I think the chief's role uh, or the EMS uh, manager, uh, their role is to identify core. Uh, and ensure that whatever reductions are, uh, are made um, uh, do not impact their core mission. And it also, 
I think encourages us to think uh, regionally. Uh, how can we uh, enhance uh, our regional uh, approach to the uh, local uh, risk? Uh, certainly, politics played a big role this year. You know, we had a, a presidential election and uh, senatorial and, and a few Congress, uh, uh, U.S. Congress um, elections. But I, I want to focus local because uh, if you have new local p uh, political leaders in place, you need to get in their offices and spend, get on their schedule and talk with them and send the message of, of the value that you, the role you play first of all, and then the value you bring uh, to the, the table and look for, find out what they're looking for in terms of uh, what questions do they have about your operation and what are they looking for for you. I think I know when people hang up after dialing 911, they want to hear sirens. Uh, and, and that's true, but I think sharing information is really important. Uh, and the better you can identify what the risks are in their, in your town or in their magisterial district, the more intently they're going to listen. Uh, if there's a specific risk in their, in their district, like a nursing home or a hospital or something like that, you should talk about that and, uh, you know, what kind of assistance you might need in, in caring for them. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the changing severity of home fires. Uh, we know today that fires burn hotter, they burn faster, uh, trapping citizens and firefighters. Um, the outcome of that is that uh, the, the tactics that we have used uh, in the past don't work today. This is not your, your grandmother's house fire that we're dealing with. Um, fires are, are reaching high intensity, 2,000 degrees. Uh, the tactics that we use using mechanical ventilation and those kind of things simultaneously with attack don't work. Um, in fact, uh, they can create a flashover in a matter of three minutes. Uh, we're losing the stairwell in, in homes in three minutes, um, uh, where in the past we were losing it, it was taking 12, 15, 17 minutes. Uh, after the smoke alarm goes off, if, if you're in bed at night uh, up on the second floor or in, the, or in a back bedroom in a ranch type home or in an apartment, so um, when, when you look at those kind of conditions where we only have three minutes to get out and uh, we have a situation where most homes aren't protected with residential sprinklers, which we know work, uh, along with the fact that we have uh, uh, many homes that don't have smoke alarms, 62% of the citizens who died in home fires uh, in the last five years did not have a working smoke alarm. Still a big problem and we see most of it in deprived, underserved communities. So, uh, we held this forum, we brought the science community in, uh, allied professionals, uh, we talked about the, uh, the, the condition, and uh, developed a, a list of items that we needed to, to address, some action items, that we'll be uh, uh, addressing over the next uh, few months. Um, first and foremost, we need to get the word out to the American Fire Service uh, that you need to rethink how you fight these fires and uh, show them, uh, first of all, why, uh, using video and other mechanisms, and then uh, demonstrate what you can do, what's the right answer. And so we plan to do that with, again, our allied professionals uh, out there and in concert with uh, the, the scientific uh, community, National Institute of Standards and Technology and uh, Underwriters Laboratories. So I understand some of the materials in our homes now are synthetic. It's not, you know, your... Uh... Like you, like we were saying, legacy furniture, things are burning faster, and that type of stuff. Well, it is the uh, it's polyurethane foam is is one of the culprits, but it's also carpeting. Uh, it is uh, it includes um, drapery, uh, many of the toys, the appliances that we use. If you were to take everything out of your home that's synthetic and put it on your front lawn, I think you'd be surprised. Um, and so um, that's, those are all contributing factors that open atrium, uh, open space design of new homes uh, is also a contributor and you add into that formula um, the uh, lightwood frame uh, condition that we see, a building construction technique, coupled with the fact that we have bigger homes on smaller lots and so when the fires occur we're seeing rapid fire spread to the neighbor's home that we weren't seeing in detached single family. So there are many aspects to this, but we think the, the critical issue right now is the interior fire. 
uh, where the synthetics are, are involved. Um, these are hydrocarbon-based uh, synthetic soil. Uh, so I don't have as much time as I used to to get out of the house. Well, the test that, uh, that NIST ran demonstrated you had about 15 minutes. Today you got three. And so that's a message is if, if for fire chiefs. Uh, if, if you want to get the message out uh, to your constituents that will save their life, uh, two things. One, uh, make sure they have working smoke alarms on every floor. And two, when that smoke alarm goes off, get out, stay out. It, it's not what we haven't told them before, but it's even more urgent now. Uh, we just lost a, a young father um, uh, here just outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, he, he gets everybody out and he goes back in for some reason. We still don't know why to retrieve something from the home and dies. A uh, former uh, Marine and uh, a young man with, with a big family and, and now they've lost their, uh, you know, their hero uh, who went back into the home when, when it just, uh, the conditions changed so rapidly. I, I'll tell you, uh, for example, let me give you a quick example. Uh, we used to ventilate homes, uh, ventilate simultaneously with attack. Uh, what we've learned from, from not only the uh, the tests that were done by that were undertaken by NIST, but we've we've learned from uh, real world ex world experience that after you open up the front door of these homes uh, in a one story structure, you only have about a hundred seconds before flashover occurs. Um, so, you know, ventilating uh, these fires isn't the right answer without uh, an immediate attack. You open that front door, you got to be ready to hit the fire. There's much more to it than that that I can't really t discuss here, but uh, we're going we're gonna to put some uh, packages together. Uh, the first thing we want to do is, is get a, 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 I won't say a bulletin, but a, a message out to the American Fire Service of the threat uh, 